Hey guys, welcome back to another video here on my channel. Today we're going to be talking about a, I guess you could call it like a milestone that I have hit in my nail polish collection and that is breaking the 1000 polishes mark. Before we do that, just like a quick housekeeping note, um, as you can see I'm in my new place like I was last time. This time I'm in a chair, I'm not on the floor, so we've made some progress. However, we are still moved the exact same amount because my boyfriend's parents came for a kind of impromptu visit and so we haven't been able to move anything for the past week or so. So it's still a little echoey in here. I still don't have any sort of like viewfinder type thing. So again, if I'm off center, I'm really sorry. Um, we're doing what we can. So with all that said, let's get into the topic of the video. So like I said, I recently hit 1000 nail polishes in my collection. And now technically I probably hit it a little bit earlier than I even noticed because I only count my current like in stock, in stock nail polishes. Um, so that doesn't count any empties that I had. And I have about five polishes that I've used up in full over the course of my life. So um, technically I probably hit it five polishes ago, but that's not how I count things. I count current nail polishes. So that's what we're going with. And before we really get into it, you know, I want to say that my collection seems excessive because it is excessive, you know, and this is not normal by any means, but I think everybody has that one thing that they really love. Um, for my aunt, you know, she she's into salt shakers. She's got more salt shakers than anybody could ever need, but that's what brings her joy. That's what makes her happy. So nail polish is the, is the salt shaker for me. So that's why I have so many back here behind me. Um, but I thought it would be kind of just fun for me, I don't know if it's gonna be fun for you, but fun for me to talk about um, how I got into this position and you know why I do it and why I keep going with it and why I enjoy it. So if that sounds interesting to you, we're just gonna go through and break stuff down piece by piece. But I do wanna show you first of all my very first nail polish I ever bought, which is Essie's Starry Starry Night, and the thousandth nail polish I bought, which is part of the Creek collection. The, actually, it's all all three of them um, were the thousandth because I was three away, and then I bought these three, so it could be any one of these. <laughs> so yeah, let's talk about why I actually got into nail polish in the first place. So at some point in 2015, I was working in a museum and this girl I worked with, she would bring in magazines all the time. So I was flipping through a Cosmo and they had an article about how Essie was bringing back this shade as well as like a few others, but this one in particular, Starry Starry Night. And it talked about how the original polish had real diamond dust in it. And I was like, what? I was super intrigued because I, I was never really one to paint my nails outside of black like I painted my nails black pretty consistently at different parts of my life but that was it I didn't really care about the polish itself I was one of those that just kind of wore a lot of black always wanted black on my nails and if there was going to be any nail polish at all but the idea of real diamond dust like somebody doing something so excessive as to grind up diamonds and throw it in a nail polish and sell it to the masses I was just like okay I have to I have to know more so I did end up going to uh, like the local Meyer, and I grabbed this and a couple other nail polishes and I was like, okay, let me check this out. When I got them home, I realized that I was terrible at painting my nails. And I did kind of what anybody would do in 2015. I went to YouTube and I typed in how to do this, how to paint my nails. And, um, you know, I started to get better. I started to pick up uh, like a lot of techniques and and I started to really enjoy it but also around that time was when like I don't know if anybody remembers this because this is like stupid drama from like six years ago at this point but Sally Hansen <laughs> reformulated a few of their nail polishes and people lost their minds specifically over Pacific Blue so I started like when I was looking up like nail polish stuff, I started getting, you know, links to these Sally Hansen Pacific Blue drama controversy videos. 
And instantly I was just hooked on the whole concept because to be honest, I just love drama. I'm just really into drama and anything. Love to read about it, love to hear about it, love to discuss it. So it, it just really pulled me in full force into the hobby. And if you're not familiar with that drama, literally all that happened was it was like this kind of like light periwinkle or cornflower blue, if I remember correctly, that Sally Hansen reformulated and it was a completely different color. They, they, they made it like this really dark, almost like navy blue. Didn't really make any sense to me, but people were really mad about it when it's one of the most dupable colors on the planet. So, you know, I, I think that people would pay pretty good money though if you had the original Pacific blue on hand. So, but yeah, so anyways, uh, from there I just started watching a lot of nail YouTubers, mostly like swatchers and stuff, you know, like Miss Holly Berry's, um, Just Face 90, Nail Polish Baby 90, all like these people who would do swatches and talk about like their collections and stuff like that. I also got a little bit into like nail art side and stuff like that, like cute polish. And um, I had a coworker at that museum that she also really loved nail polish. She loved doing her nails. And I remember one time I asked her, I was like, how many nail polishes do you have? Because she changed her color so frequently and she's like almost a hundred at least. And I was like, wow. That's crazy. I'm never going to have that many. So yeah, uh, <laughs> I just thought that was insane. And look at me now. One of the big reasons that I do like doing my nails and caring for my nails and maintaining my nails is actually kind of a personal reason. I was diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder when I was 12 or 13. And I just really... 2015 was a bad year in my life. I was uh, in my final year of college. I was applying and interviewing for this job that it was a, a year long application and interviewing process in order to go live and work abroad, which meant that I would be moving away from my boyfriend for an indeterminate amount of time. And my OCD was just at its worst. You know, I was having a really hard time feeling like I had any control over my life. And that in turn just kind of fed my OCD more, which just made everything else feel so much worse. But doing my nails kind of gave me something to really channel that energy into, you know? I, one of my biggest, uh, I guess you could call it like a tick or like compulsive behaviors was like repetitively doing the same task over and over because it didn't feel right the first time. So I would wash the same dish over and over because I was like, I didn't do it right. Or I would fold the same towel over and over and over again for an hour, just one towel, because the corners didn't line up right. And there was never any like end in sight for some of those things. But I don't know, for some reason, when you paint your nails, it's for me, very methodical. You know, I, the first thing I do is I, I pick out my color and I set, I set my base coat, my polish, my top coat, my acetone, like I said it all in a row, all the steps are laid out in front of me. So there's an end in sight. And then you, you go through all the steps and you paint your nails and then you're done. And for me, it was something that I could be nitpicky and precise about. And, and for me, it was like, there's a right way to do it, but there was always an end goal. Like there's always an end and then you're done and you move on with your life. And I don't know why this was something that I was able to just stop at one and not sit there and redo and redo and redo, but it worked. And so there was a, a year or a year and a half in my life where I just painted my nails every single day because that was the only thing that really helped me rein in some of my OCD behaviors. And the other thing too is, you know, when you wash the same dish or, or I'm like sitting there and I'm like washing my hands over and over or folding a towel or, or what have you, you know, it's not very productive. At the end of it, at the end of that hour, I still only have one folded towel and that's it. And, and that's all I've done for an hour. And it, it's really hard on you mentally because you're like, I spent all that time for this, you know? But at the end of like 30 minutes to an hour of painting my nails, now my nails are painted. I have, a, it's almost like a productive outcome and for me, that made me feel a little bit better. Like I had done something at least productive in the time that I was channeling those feelings into another activity. 
And so that really helped me as well, which then in turn justified me buying, you know, a thousand nail polishes, but here we are. And honestly, like over the past couple of years, I've gained a lot more control over my OCD behaviors. I'm able to kind of stop myself when I start to get into those loops and things like that. But it also, I think, helped that this hobby came into my life in one of the most debilitating times of my life because it, it was almost like a catalyst to show me like, hey, you can do something that you want to be precise and nitpicky and perfect about, but you can just be done and you can set it aside at the end of the day. And so, honestly, like, I'm not going to say like painting my nails cured my OCD because you can't cure it. You know, it's always going to be there, but it's given me just something healthier to put my, put my thoughts into. And it also, it's like not just painting my nails. I can... I can organize my nail polishes. If you've seen my spreadsheet and things like that. And so there's a lot of ways that I can utilize this hobby in a productive way to channel those behaviors into. And so that's why I, one of the big reasons why I think that this hobby has stuck in my life for so long. Okay, so now you guys know like how and why I got into hobby. Let's talk about what has changed since I first got into the hobby because at this point it's been about six years and so I definitely don't collect the same way that I did. So initially I really only used like drugstore or mainstream. I wasn't super well versed on indies and even though like people that I watched do swatch videos, uh, they would swatch indies. I didn't really buy into them because they weren't as accessible to me because they were a little bit more expensive typically. And it was one of those things where I was nervous to buy something online that I couldn't like touch and see first especially like something as personal as like a color that like, you know, you want to match to your skin tone or whatever. So I typically would go to Meyer, which is our local like grocery store here in Michigan. And I'd pick up one or two polishes here or there, OPI, Sally Hansen, Orly, China Glaze, all that kind of stuff. And I'd always pay, you know, whatever the price was on the ticket, I'd pay full price. I might get a discount here and there, but I wasn't like looking for deals. I wasn't trying to find, you know, wholesalers online or anything like that. I was just going to the store for some groceries and I'd pick up a polish here and there. It was really just an easy thing to do. Now I almost never pay full price for drugstore. Um, I buy from a website called Trans Design and there's a lot of other websites like that, like HP Beauty Bars, uh, like they have a good discount sometimes. But I, if I buy or when I buy uh, mainstream polishes, I never really buy them from the store unless it's like on a super sale or something like that. And I'm also trying to focus my purchasing habits more away from mainstream polishes and try to delve into Indian boutique a little bit more, which I feel like I've been doing a decent job of this year. Uh, the other thing that's changed is my collection space used to be one small, like, what is it, like three or four tiered acrylic rack that sat on my nightstand. Now it's three Helmers, <laughs> and uh, so that has changed quite a bit. Um, nail art is a thing that has changed a lot in my life. I, I still don't do enough of it, but like before I was too afraid to even try it because I was afraid it was going to look so bad. People were going to make fun of me, and I just wasn't confident in my skills. But especially with discovering stamping, now I'm just all about it. I just need to make more time for it. Also from the beginning, you know, I, I did watch YouTube right from the start. I think part of that is what kind of helped to spur my interest in nail polish, but I wasn't as like in it, I guess you could say. You know, I I waited and I, I waited for the YouTubers to tell me what collections were coming out and you know what to buy and things like that. But now I know the I know the collection patterns, I know the schedules, I follow all their Instagrams, I, I'm on all their mailing list because I want to know ahead of time. I get the Orly color pass so that I can get the Orly collection early and things like that. And also now I'm doing YouTube. I mean, I'm not huge. I've got a little, I think I'm close to 350 subscribers or something like that, but I never thought I would even do something like this. So it's just kind of interesting to see how things have changed for me in that aspect. Full collections were never something that I ever would have seen myself purchasing in the past. I was just like, what's the point? I'm not a swatcher, I don't need this. But I don't know, as time went on, it was sometimes it was just cheaper to buy a collection in full because I liked 
more shades than not and you'd get a discount when you bought the full collection um sometimes i did like the whole collection which the very first full collection i ever bought was the china glaze i think it was called paint it black uh and it was like a halloween collection and it was just six polishes and they were all different finishes of black nail polish and i just thought that was the coolest concept so that was my gateway into buying full collections but before that, I never bought a full collection and I never would have even humored the concept of it. So the last really big change I think is, like I said earlier, I painted my nails every single day, once a day, because that's just, you know, I had time, I was still in school and that was just really what I needed at the time. Now I only, only paint my nails two to three times a week. And part of it is just, I don't feel the need to paint my nails every single day. You know, I've got other stuff I've got to do, but it's also, I work two jobs. My partner works two jobs. Um, I kind of manage the household, so to speak. Um, and you know, like working 40 to 60 hours a week, it takes a lot of time. So I only paint my nails two to three times a week now, but that's more than enough for my Instagram content and stuff like that. So whatever. And I like to change my color pretty frequently anyways, so it works for me. So what are my purchasing habits when it comes to nail polish? I would say that my, I don't have a set budget for nail polish. Well, the way that I budget my money is, you know, we pay all our bills, we pay our savings, and then we divide what's left and that's our fun money for the month. And so, for me, I just, whatever I want to buy out of that, if it's, you know, 50% or 100% or however percent of it goes to nail polish, so be it. But I can't go over that. So it varies from month to month, as you've seen from my, like, monthly collected hauls. You know, sometimes I buy a lot. Sometimes I buy a lot, but less than the other a lot. You know, like, it's always a lot, but <laughs> it does kind of fluctuate. It just stays pretty high. When I was younger, I would only buy maybe a couple nail polishes here and there because I was a broke college student, couldn't really afford a bunch. And I wasn't, you know, as like ear to the ground about collections and stuff like that. So I would just buy one here or there, but now I'm like, I don't want to buy just one polish and then pay shipping on that. So typically when I buy polish, it's, it's at least a few at a time, especially when I'm ordering online because I don't want to I don't want to pay shipping really is the, is the thing. So if they have free shipping or discounted shipping, like I want to make, make my money's worth right there. Once I started like seeing this as a hobby and not just something I was doing at the time, I did start to pick up the pace with buying. Um, I was not as choosy about like colors and finishes at the time. So I have like a lot of stuff that I probably wouldn't buy now, but back then I just was like really intrigued by it. But you know, our tastes change over time too. So that could be part of it. And another thing is I spent a lot of time watching people's collection videos to try to figure out like, what are the staples in nail polish? You know, like when you look at makeup, for example, everybody and their mother owned a naked palette, you know, that was like the thing to have. And so I was kind of looking for that sort of thing in nail polish too. And you'd see like, uh, OPI's Lincoln Park After Dark and and Essie's Mint Candy Apple and um, what China Glaze Flip Flop Fantasy like those were all polishes I bought because YouTube was like these are the ones you have to have like and, and you know that was just me wanting to be kind of like a part of part of the gang part of the crew you know and I I, I get why those are staples those are all good polishes and I'm glad I have them. But I think that less and less do I look for like the, you got to have this, you got to go buy this kind of YouTubers. And I just like to see what they showcase and then pick from there. So I don't purchase based on other people's habits so much anymore as I did when I was first getting into the hobby. And then over time, you can also see like my purchasing habits have fluctuated. When I look at my spreadsheet in 2019, I didn't pay my nails hardly at all and I didn't purchase much at all because I was at a job that I hated and I was really depressed and I just wasn't interested in much of anything and then you can see that in 2020 pretty much when they sent us all the work from home uh it just picked right back up again because it was nice to be at home it was nice to be out of that office <laughs> and it's just like it spiked you can see on my spreadsheet video I think I showed that spiked a lot and it just hasn't really died down since but 
I don't know, this month I, I bought a few polishes here and there, but I think that next month I need to focus on purchasing stuff for my apartment. So it's going to be kind of a sharp downturn. And then probably in August and September, you'll see it shoot right back up again. <laughs> I know myself. Um, and just what, like the last thing I'll say about like financially with nail polish, I know I buy a lot. It's, you know, I show you guys everything I buy every single month. I don't hide any of that. Don't ever feel like you have to spend like excessive amounts in any hobby you're in to enjoy the hobby or to be at a certain level in the hobby, you know? The very basis of a hobby is doing something you enjoy and you don't need all these nail polishes to enjoy painting your nails. You, you could have one color that you just love and you buy over and over. And that's all you need to be part of the hobby, you know? So I know like a lot of people when they first get into some kind of hobby, they feel really pressured or compelled to drop hundreds and hundreds of dollars just to be kind of on the level of someone who's been in, in it for a while. And I just think like, Take your time, enjoy the ride, you know. It took me six years to build up the collection I have, and even that is only because I purchased somebody else's collection, so it boosted my collection pretty heavily, you know. Don't ever feel like you need to keep up with anybody else in this hobby or any other thing that you do in life. Just do what's best for you. Evaluate your budget and your lifestyle and your wants and decisions based on that, not what somebody on YouTube is telling you, you know, as I proceed to tell you <laughs> what to do, huh? So out of everything, what would I have done differently in this hobby? Uh, probably nothing, you know? The only thing I can think of is I wish I had started earlier. And I know that sounds crazy because it's like, I've already spent so much money and time on this. If I started earlier, it'd be even more money and time invested into this hobby. But it's the truth. When I was younger, I didn't like being perceived as feminine. And actually, I still don't. I know I have like long hair now. I, I didn't use I had really short hair. I never wore makeup. I only wore like men's clothes, men's shoes, everything. Now I, I do a little of both. I wear men's and women's clothing. I, I grew my hair out because I don't know why I did that. And I grew my hair out and now I wear makeup. But I didn't start wearing makeup until I was 22 or 23 because I was so uncomfortable with the thought that someone was going to look at me and go, oh, she's beautiful. I'm like, ew, don't call me that. I don't know. It's just like a really unsettling thing for me. But I started to realize uh, as I got older that I guess just I was so afraid when I was younger to involve myself in these like female coded hobbies and like when you look at the marketing it's so clearly targeting you know women and, and how to be like more feminine stuff like that i never like took the time to realize that just because it's targeted towards a feminine audience doesn't mean i can't take it and make it my own you know there are plenty of like butch or masculine women who still love makeup and nails there are plenty of men who love makeup and nails there are plenty of non-binary people who who love these things and still can identify as their, however they identify. So why can't I just do what I want, you know? And once I figured that out, everything was cool and I ran with it. And, and so I wish that I was able to kind of come to that conclusion a little bit earlier in my life that it doesn't matter what society, I think everybody goes through this, you know, it doesn't matter what society thinks at the end of the day, but we all still kind of feel a little bit of pressure from that kind of thing. So I guess for me, it was just, I wish I had realized earlier that I can do what I want and it's okay. I can perceive myself however I want. You know, it doesn't matter how society perceives me and that's it, you know? So I guess I wish that I had really done away with a lot of that internalized misogyny and, and feelings like that from a much younger age, but at least I got there, right? But now I'm just so glad that I'm in this because I'm glad that I have my YouTube channel because I get to talk to so many of you in the comments and I see so many of you like consistently here and also like on my Instagram and stuff like that. And I think it's really cool. I'm glad that we can like build up a, like a rapport and stuff like that. And, and one of my friends recently got into stamping and nail polish like super hard recently. So I have somebody I could talk to in real life for the first time ever. So I'm really excited about that.
and I'm just happy to be here. So in conclusion, <laughs> thank you all for listening to my super unnecessary uh, ramblings here. Uh, let me know down in the comments, do you remember your very first nail polish that you ever bought? And do you remember, you know, what sparked your interest in this hobby? And is there any kind of like collection milestone that you have? Like well, how big is your collection? Or do you like to keep a small collection that's really curated? I know that some people are really into that too, like more minimalist. Let me know down in the comments below and I will talk to you about it soon. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.